Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Ms. Miranda Spent, all right, a policy associate at the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty in Milwaukee. And she earned a BA in political science and economics from Marquette University and pursuing a master's in public administration. Good luck to you in that pursuit. That's a very noble pursuit. All right. Welcome to Indisputable. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you? Doing quite well. We're going to chop it up about Donald Trump, his previous past performances, especially that on CNN, and how this translates to either A, policy or B, popularity within the Republican Party. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about Trump and his current chances. So if you would opine, I would then respond. Mm -hmm. So I think I want to start by saying that I don't want to defend what um, Donald Trump was saying during the CNN town hall. I don't agree with a lot of the things with the name calling. Um, And I do think it's worth talking about how the backlash that CNN has been getting for even having Trump on the platform. I think that that will eventually backfire um, on what they're trying to do, it seems to be um, tiptoeing the line of censorship, in my opinion, and I don't think that will um, go very well with conservative voters. And I think that that might just fan the flames of his popularity even more. Let me ask you a question when you say it is censorship. What is your definition of censorship? I suppose it would be um, purposefully trying to filter or suppress certain viewpoints or people's voices. Do you consider Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida? banning books in African American studies and banning books that are connected to the story of either Harriet Tubman or even Dr. King. Do you think the banning of those books is the same thing as censorship in your description? Well, my understanding of the situation in Florida is that um, these aren't necessarily book bans. It's about making sure that the books that are being put in classrooms are appropriate and age appropriate. And I think that um, that's a, a noble pursuit. I don't think it's about banning specific stories outright um, in the way you describe. Are you aware of what books have been banned and what stories they contain? Um, no, not in Florida. All right, uh, I am. So I would encourage you before you answer the question with such conclusive um, opinion that you at least know what is being banned, okay? Um, so let's talk about censorship. Censorship is legal. In the context of private industry, uh, I don't have to bring people on my show. I choose to. And if I chose not to, that is not censorship in the context of Constitution. And that's usually how it is offered. For example, um, it was Donald Trump who filed a lawsuit, ironically, against um, Twitter and others, saying that they were violating his freedom of speech. Well, the Constitution is clear. Censorship is only even permissible as it relates to government silencing an opponent per se, right? So if you have a political opinion that's contrary to what the government believes, the government cannot penalize you. Is my reading of the Constitution and the word censorship incorrect there? No, you're absolutely right. And I, when I, I suppose when I say censorship, it says that doesn't mean that they're not allowed to do that. They're yeah. obviously a private company. Um, I'm not saying that they they shouldn't do that. If CNN were to say that in the future they don't want to give Trump a live audience or they want to um, have pr- provide longer time so that they can fact check him more often, they're absolutely in the right to do that. Yeah. My point is to say that by doing that, I think they're um, fanning the flames of the distrust that conservatives and the American public in general has of the media. They're allowed to do that, absolutely. But to say that Trump is dangerous, that he shouldn't be given prime time live airtime, that um, people are going to see that and they're gonna think, well, they don't, they, there's a reason they are purposefully trying to filter how I'm how I'm seeing this candidate. They're not letting me get okay. the full story the way that, that I want to know it. And to them, I think to most people who at least Trump supporters, I think that that would only make the situation worse. They're not, oh. um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, 
So I'm gonna get to the Trump and violence statement in a minute. Let me first address this. Uh, so you clearly understand what uh, government censorship is and it's antithetical to the constitution, it's against the law, right? Constitution says it's a no, no, just because a person or maybe even a company or CEO, if they offer something that's in disagreement to the government, the government cannot then retaliate to punish that individual. Am I correct so far, Ms. Spent? Yes. Okay, back to run to Satan in Florida. He decides because Disney said something, the CEO of Disney said something he didn't like. He decides to launch a legislative campaign in order to pass a law to create a tax burden for Disney that Disney did not have before the statement was made. And he clearly said during a press conference, it was in direct response to Disney being critical of the policies of DeSantis. Is that not a de facto violation of what the constitution says should never happen? Um, I think I would agree with you on that. I, I don't agree with Ron DeSantis's actions against Disney. Obviously, they're a private company allowed to do those things. And um, he retaliated because of um, what they said they believe. So yeah, I, you're right on that front. All right, let's go to Trump. And I appreciate the concession there. Let's go to Trump and the idea of him not being violent. So I get your context, I understand it. You're basically saying, listen, um, all of the rhetoric about Donald Trump and him being dangerous is probably going to end up being more problematic than anything else. And let me submit this to you. It was CNN who said Donald Trump lied about the election. It was CNN who said Donald Trump caused the insurrection. It was CNN who conclusively said Donald Trump was a tyrant, bad for the country. Fox News said it too, they just said it to each other. They just lied to the audience, all right? So if you have offered this to your audience, you're CNN, if you've told your audience for years, Donald Trump is bad for America. Donald Trump tried to create um, an insurrection or did create an insurrection to overturn the government. Uh, he's violent, he's dangerous, etc. If you've gone on record and said that, do you not find it somewhat at least, I don't know, disrespectful to the audience to then invite the same man after he gets convicted of sexual assault to your show? You don't think that's irresponsible? You don't understand why people would have an issue with that? Well, I understand why people would have an issue with it. But to say that it's irresponsible, I don't think that's true. I think that um, media has a responsibility to make sure that people have all the information in front of them. They're telling you that Trump is violent, that he's dangerous, he's a threat to democracy. So then show us, put him on a stage, which is what they did. And ask him yeah. all the questions where he gave those answers, and that's exactly what I think they did a good job of asking him questions where he they he, they made him look like that, so that they're giving him the truth. The commentator she tried, but the format was wrong in my opinion. Um, I bring people all the time on my show that have different political opinions, like yourself. You and I are not perfectly aligned uh, ideologically, and we're not. We don't have to be. All right, it's not a requirement to have that conversation, but. If I really believed that you were a tyrant and you were going to overthrow, overthrow the government, you have the power to do so. Uh, and I've said this for years, and and you just got convicted of sexually abusing a human being, a woman, just got convicted by a jury of this, I'm not platforming you. And if for some reason I ever do platform you, I'm doing it to deal with you. I'm not doing it to give you an interview. I'm doing it so you can be dealt with. That would be the difference, and I think that's what people expected, especially given the buildup of CNN um, against Trump tactics for so many years. Do you understand that point? I do. I suppose it's just that. Um, I mean, he's a presidential candidate. He this was meant to be a town hall that was him speaking directly to the voters. I mean, I do think that um, Caitlin Collins, I believe her name, she did yeah. a great job. I think she did. Overall. Um, trying to fact check him as much as she could, asking him questions. But he lies too much. He no, lies too I, much. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I agree. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, I think that it's, you know, people have the right to be upset if that's that's how they feel. I do think it's interesting that CNN invited him on, but again, I think that's that's journalism integrity. You know, he he's the former president. He's a he's a current presidential candidate, and. Yeah. I think you know, it's media's job to make sure that people are giving are getting information. All right, well, listen, I believe CNN did for ratings and nothing more. All right, 
I appreciate you being on the show. I hope you come back. Good luck to you in your master studies, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely.